In this problem, we are looking at the boundary layer again, and this time what we're trying to do is to quantify the net force that's applying to air as it flows over a flat plate. What we have is air incoming from this side here and with a uni uniform distribution, and it's leaving from that side there, no, that way, <laughs> uh, with a different velocity distribution. And what we want to do is to calculate the net force that applied to the air to change its velocity distribution. The net force is calculated, calculated with a momentum balance equation, and this momentum balance equation is like so. It says that the net force applying on the, on the system, on a certain amount of air in the control volume, is the sum of two terms. One is the change in time of a volume integral, like so, and the other term is the net flow of momentum through the boundaries, and this is a surface integral, like so, of dA. The contents of those integrals um, change every time you change the left side here. And I like to not learn them by heart, but instead every time look them up in the formula sheet. And so these are here inside the control volume, rho times the velocity vector. And through the control surface, it is rho times the velocity vector times this very annoying term, which is the V relative, like this, dot the n vector, n vector unit vector pointing outwards by convention. Now, this equation in this case, um, in our particular case, will simplify quite a lot. And this is um, due to two things. First is that this term here at the start, this is going to be equal to zero. Why? Because the flow is steady. So any change in time of anything, uh, even if that term here is not zero, the change in time of that is zero. And so the first term goes to zero. This is zero. And the second term, we're going to split it into two components, one for the inlet and one for the outlet. And so for the inlet, it looks like this. This is V, so rho vector V times V orthogonal here, dA. And then we have here plus out of rho V orthogonal dA, like, like this for the outlet. A trick in here, or a danger if you want, is that this term here and that term here they have different signs. They are here negative on the inlet and they are positive one on the outlet. So when we rewrite this equation here further down, we complete this. Um, this is equal now to minus the integral over the inlet of rho v1 like this, v1 as a absolute length, yes, dA plus integral out of rho v2 v2 dA, like so. Okay, so this is the net force equation in general. Now before we go any further, we have to be very careful with what we define as the inlet and what we define as the outlet. There are two possibilities for this for this particular problem. One possibility would be to have a rectangular control volume, like so, and then to have an outlet velocity like this, a velocity distribution that's given by, I'm sorry, this is not very clean, a velocity distribution that's given by the function that we know, and then a straight line here for the inlet. This would be one and this would be two. And if we apply this equation here on top to this velocity distribution, we would get a wrong result. Why? Because the mass flow that's leaving this control volume here is not equal to the mass flow that's incoming here. What is happening is that if we draw such a control volume, then we are bound to see velocity leaving through the top surface of the control volume. This velocity, this fluid, going out of the control volume carries with it momentum. And so it affects the value of the net force here. Now, it's a very common error to use this. Uh, if any fluid dynamicists tell you uh, that they never did this mistake before, then you should probably not believe everything they say. Um, a much more useful control volume to use uh, would be to have a control volume that looks like this. I'm sorry, let me try to draw this again. Straight line for the bottom plate. Um, then the straight outlet 
like this with the velocity distribution that we know very well now with this function here. I can move this up a little bit. And then at the inlet, a shorter, a shorter inlet. Doesn't have the same height. Whoop. Like so. Like so. So that we would have now a control volume whose top surface is not traversed by fluid and remains undefined, but I'm certain there is no fluid uh, carried carrying momentum across the top surface of my of my control volume. Now this outlet here has a height which is called delta, which is the thickness of the boundary layer. The inlet has a height which is not no. Um, it's not possible to measure it because the velocity is completely uniform. There's no point that I could, I could tell here um, at which anything would change. And this height h1 here, we calculate it using a mass balance equation. We've done this in another problem uh, before. This we call here h1. If we use this control volume here, then we're safe again coming back to that equation there here and applying this equation on top um, to the bottom of the control volume. Okay, so let's work out now this equation here, this whole vector equation on top, which I'm going to circle as red, something like this. Thank goodness for autocorrect. Um, and so we're going to try to solve for this equation and quantify what net force applying to the fluid as it transits from the inlet to the outlet. Let's take a look now. I'm going to take now this vector equation and only look at the x component. This is because everything in this flow is horizontal, purely horizontal in a positive x direction. So I could just get away with quantifying here f net as a scalar, the length of f net as being here, comparing to, I'm going to compare again to the equation that's on top here, minus the integral at the, at the inlet of rho v1 v1 dA. Yes. This time I'm not taking the vector v1, I'm taking the length of vector v1. Um, and then the same thing for the outlet. The integral out of rho v2 v2 dA, like so. Okay, let's take a look at this. At the inlet, the velocity is completely uniform. It is not a function of area. So I could just skip the integral and just say this is rho v1 squared multiplied by the area, a1. Yes. And at the outlet, I could take rho out of the equation, but I'm stuck now because v2 here is a complicated function. Um, and it's a function of the area a. And so I'm going to keep here the integral here out of v2 v2 squared dA, like so. Okay, what is a1 equal to? Well, it is equal to the width of the plate on this side, width in z, which is called here L2, multiplied by the height of our control volume. And this height is known, we've calculated it before, as being h1, this length h1. So let's replace a1 here, a1 here, by h1 l2, okay? And then on this side now, we have rho times the integral over something dA. dA, I'm going to split it in two. I'm going to say again, across the width of the plate, so in the z direction down here, in the z direction, I have a width l2. Nothing is changing according to L2. Um, and then the rest of the integral, I'm going to carry it from 0, this point here, up to delta in the y direction. So this is going to be the integral from 0 to delta of v2 squared dy, like so. Okay, now we could carry on directly with this calculation. Carry out the whole integral here and then swap those symbols here for the corresponding numbers. But there's a trick we can play with it that's going to make our life much easier. And the trick is to take this value of h1 here, and instead of putting in the number for it, one point something centimeters, almost two centimeters, 
instead of putting the number into it, we replace this with the general expression for h1 that we had before. Now this expression can be formulated like this. You're going to see why we're going to do this. We have rho v1 squared l2, and then instead of h1 here, I replace it with the general integral expression that we had when we calculated h1 before. This is 1 over v1 here, integral from 0 to delta of u2 dy. This is super cool because look, when we have the two terms now, we can see that we have the integral from 0 to delta of u2 and here the integral zero, from 0 to delta of u2 squared. So these two integrals, we can carry them out together and simplify the calculation a great deal. Um, well, we'll take care of the rest. So we have here minus v1 squared divided by v1 is going to be v1. So v1, I'm going to put it here inside the integral. I'm going to take the rest that's left over. Rho L2, we have the integral from 0 to delta of v1 u2 dy plus rho L2 integral from 0, whoop, integral from 0 to delta of u2 squared dy, like so. Okay, what does that, what does this become? Well, it's equal to rho L2, and now I'm going to carry out this, this, these two integrals here into 1. This is going to be the integral from 0 to delta of this term here minus that term there u2 squared minus v1 u2 dy, like so. Yes, I put the square brackets just for um, clarity, but they're not even needed in here. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to replace u2 here, u2, by the function for u2 that we are given um, in the problem setting. And the function for u2 is like this, u2 is equal to, I have to be careful when I transcribe this, um, where is this? u2 is here, u2 is v1 y over delta to the power 1 over 6, like this. So I'm going to take this expression here and put it inside both of those terms there. Let's see what this looks like. We have here the net force, still calculating the net force, is rho L2 times the integral from 0 to delta of u2 squared. u2 squared is going to be v1 squared. Then I take delta. Delta here is to the power minus 1 over 6. And now this is squared, so this becomes minus 2 over 6. Y is to the power 1 over 6, but this is squared, so this becomes y to the power 2 over 6, 1 third, yeah. and then minus, here I have v1 u2, and so v1 here, v1 times u2, v1 delta to the power minus 1 over 6, and y to the power 1 over 6, here. And this whole integral here, I carry out with respect to dy like so. Okay, let's try to simplify a little bit some more and let's try to carry out this here v1 squared and v1 squared here put them outside of the integral. So I have rho l2 v1 squared and now I have the integral to carry out of delta minus one third y one third yes. minus delta minus one sixth y minus one sixth here, like so and again this whole thing here is with respect to dy okay and now we have to do the hard math now we have to do the integral here of these whole terms delta to the power minus one third this is just a number it's not a function of y 
And so it's just going to be carried further without any modification. Data 1 over 3, like so. y to the power 1 third becomes 1 over 1 third plus 1, like so, of y to the power 1 third plus 1. Oops, let me rewrite this so it's a little bit clean. 1 third plus 1, like this. Minus, same thing for this delta here not modified at all, delta to the power minus 1 over 6, and then I have here y to the power, I'm sorry, I have 1 over 1 6 plus 1, like so, of y to the power 1 6 plus 1. And this whole integral is evaluated between the value of delta and the value of 0, like so. Okay, let's move this up a little bit. And let's work the math out. This is now. One over one, okay. One third plus one is four thirds. One over four thirds is three fourths. That's three fourths of delta to the power minus one third. Y to the power four thirds evaluated between delta and zero. This is going to be delta to the power minus four thirds. Like this. No, delta to the power four thirds. Try to erase this like so. I'm just learning to use this new tool, so I hope you can be a little bit patient with me. And this part here is delta to the power minus one sixth remains the same. Let's put the number first. Let's put this number first. So let me erase this and have one over. This is seven sixth. So this is becomes now six over seven of delta to the power minus 1 over 6. And what is y to the power 7 6 evaluated between delta and 0? This becomes just delta to the power 7 6. OK, this looks pretty dramatic, but actually, look, it's super simplified. We have rho L2 V1 squared multiplied by delta to the power minus 1 third multiplied by delta to the power 4 thirds. This is just delta. So it's four, no, I'm sorry, three fourths of delta. And this is minus six over seven of delta to the power minus one six multiplied by delta to the power seven six. This is just delta again, like so. And so you can work out the math for this, but I'm lazy because I did it before and I want to do it again. And so this works out as minus three over 28. This is rho l2 v1 squared times minus 3 over 28 here of delta, like so. And this now becomes here, the final result. So let's have f net is equal to minus 3 over 28 of rho L2 V1 squared delta. And this is a general expression. Oh, I didn't square my square. Ah, cannot make it to work. That's fine. So this is the general expression for the for the force. And now let's just put numbers in there. If we put numbers, we get minus 3 over 28 multiplied by the density 1.225, multiplied by the length 2, which is 0 0.8, multiplied by the velocity incoming, which is 25 squared, multiplied by the thickness of the boundary layer at the outlet, which is 2 centimeters. Here. And if you type this in, you should get, um, let me just check this, 3.625, I get 1.312 minus, let me try, minus 1.312 newtons. So the flow comes in with a straight, university, uh, un, straight uniform velocity distribution at the inlet. And by the time its velocity distribution has changed at the outlet, its momentum has reduced. Um, and this is due to the net force that has been applied by the plate on the fluid 
which is backwards, which is in this case, let's try to represent it. It is minus, this is F net. It is in length minus 1.312 newtons. Um, and this is the sum of all the shear, the friction that's applied by the plate on the fluid as it goes from the inlet to the outlet. And this is how you calculate net force in a flow system where the velocity, velocity distributions are different at the inlet than at the outlet.